Hello everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Reentry. I'm Bat Boob and this is The Only Way Is Beastly. Today we will do the final lesson of the Lunar Academy, which is lesson number seven, the Descent Engine. And what we need to do in this lesson is, uh, well, use the Descent Propulsion Engine. It's part of the main propulsion system itself and it's used to perform the descent to the lunar surface. So in this lesson, we're only going to see how to pressurize it and learn the basics of operating it. And of course, before you do that, don't forget to help the channel keep growing by uh, liking, commenting, and most importantly, subscribing. Help us keep doing more of these videos. Right, welcome to the Descent Propulsion System lesson, where we will learn how to use the Descent Engine. Roger that. So the DPS, as I've already said, is part of the NPS, uh, which also consists of the descent propulsion section and the ascent propulsion section. Each section is complete and independent of the other and consists of a liquid propellant rocket engine with its own propellant storage pressurization and feed components. The DPS provides the thrust to control descent to the lunar surface and the APS provides the thrust to ascent from the lunar surface. So both propulsion sections use the identical high hypogolic propellants, the a 50-50 mixture by weight uh, the hydrazine N2H4 and unsymmetrical oh god dimethyl hydrazine dimethyl hydrazine there we go so UDHM as the fuel nitrogen uh, tetroxide N2O4 as the oxidizer the injection ratio of the oxidizer to fuel is approximately 1.6 to 1 by weight so basic operation of the two propulsion sections is similar each section Gaseous helium forces the propellants from their tanks through propellant shut-off valves to the engine injectors. The DPS uses supercritical helium propellant pressurization and ambient helium to perform the initial pressurization. The explosive devices subsystem, the EDS, opens explosive valves in the DPS to enable propellant tank pressurization and venting. So let's switch over to here. Let's stand up a bit more. There we go. So the explosive devices subsystem, the EDS, opens explosive valves in the DPS to enable propellant tank pressurization and venting. The guidance, navigation and control subsystem issues automatic on and off commands, gimbal drive, uh, I, I, I can't even pronounce that word, actuator, there we go, commands and thrust level commands to the descent engine. Descent engine arming and ignition are controlled by automatic guidance equipment or by the astronauts through the stabilisation and control um, assembly and the descent engine control assembly as well. Before Earth launch, the satellite, no, the propellant tanks are partially pressurised, so the tanks will be maintained within a safe pressure level under the temperature changes that can occur between the time the tanks are loaded and launched. Before the initial engine start, the eulogy space you know, ullage, I don't know, that word, space in each propellant tank requires additional pressurization. This initial pressurization, which is pre-pressurization, is accomplished with ambient helium. With each command module, verify that the hatch to the LM tunnel is closed and on dock. Translate the CSM out from the thrust direction to the lunar module's descent engine so they won't collide when the DPS is ignited. So, let's just go and check that the tunnel is closed. Yes, it is. Okay, so we need to have how the hatch is closed. We've just done that, and then we need to undock. So then we need to translate the CSM out of the thrust direction to the lunar module and descent engine so they won't collide when the DPS is ignited. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, let's switch over to the lunar module. Let's open this. Checklists. We don't need the DAP setup, we need the DPS. Intervehicular transfer. Could that be. That's a new one. Hmm. Well, that's run, so that's fine. Right, let me get this a moment. Hang on. Everything is switched on that I am fully aware of. Uh, 
Where's the ECS? It's for EPS. The LCS. Definitely not on pre launch. Well, for now, I think we're going to have to assume that they are ready because there's no indication of where to go from there. So, let's get started with this. So, the helium monitor switch on panel one can be used to monitor the helium tanks for the helium system. Set this to off. Roger. So a digital readout of the helium pressure can be seen on the upper part of panel 1. Where is the helium one? Because this is panel 1. I see glycol, I see reaction control, I see the ECS. Thrust temp pressure, that'll be it, into press here. Fuel, oxygen, no, I can't see anything for the helium. Hmm, I don't know where that is. Okay. Um, so the helium display in the main propulsion section you should read 0000. There it is. Now I've seen it. Right, yeah, so it's on nothing. Okay, let's check the pressure in the ambient helium bottom. Let's set this to ambient pressure. That's 1592. So the helium display should now indicate a pressure of about 1600 PSIA, which it is there. The pressure might vary due to the temperature differences. The propellant tanks are pressurised by opening explosive valves in the ambient helium line and in the lines leading to the fuel and oxidizer tanks. Let the helium flow into the lines. We once again return to the explosive devices section on panel 8. Set the master arm to arm. Here we are, switches are on. And the two controlled explosions must be triggered to pressurise the DPS first. Set the DPS uh, PRPLNT VLV to fire to open the fuel and oxidizer compatibility valves. Let's check this a bit more closely. No, oh, okay, so we've opened it. Right, with the valves open, we then set the DES start HE press switch to fire. Do this now to so the ambient isolation tank explosive fan. There we are. Take a look at the helium display once again. Ooh, we've dropped to 803. Okay. Notice that the pressure is now reduced and as it has entered the DPS system. The cryogenic storage vessel is isolated by an explosive valve which is fired automatically after an on engine command has been given. Let's get familiar with the ignition process before igniting the engine. I will first describe this, then later walk you through it and show you where to find the switches. So with the Engine arm switch on panel one. Oh, which I'm not quite sure where it is without it being pointed to me. Hmm, I'm tempted to say it's that, but it's not. It's going to be in one of these, I think. Engine arm. There we go. Um, yeah. With the engine arm switch panel one set to DES, the engine on command can be given manually by pressing the start push button on panel five, or it can be given automatically by the LGC or the AGS. In either case, the master arm switch must be in the on position to automatically fire the explosive valve. A delay circuit causes a 1.3 second delay between opening of the propellant shutoff valves and firing of the supercritical helium isolation explosive valve. So let's switch that to supercritical. Has that changed? 115. Oh. So the master arm of the ED system should still be armed. Looks like it is. So open the descent helium regulator one used to regulate the supercritical helium lines. And on the upper part of panel one, the thrust gauge shows the command and actual thrust setting of the engine. The upper part of number one. Hmm. I can't see it yet, unless that's it. No. So this is panel one, as I've already said. There are some things that do need pointing out just a little bit better. Okay, let's come back to that one. So let's set the engine arm switch on panel one to DES. <coughs> there we go. 
and press start on panel 5 to ignite the engine. There we go. If you go out and look at the external view, you can see that the engine is on and producing thrust. The engine is burning at only 10% from now. Let's have a quick glance, shall we? Oh yes, there it is. That's only at 10% power. That looks surprisingly powerful. Mm. Well, that, is, that is actually quite interesting. Mm. So press stop on panel, panel 5 to stop the engine. There we are. Set the throttle control setting to manual using the THR control switch on panel 1. So set that to manual. Auto will allow the LGC to control it and man will allow the TTCA to control it. So we need to set this to manual. There we go. And set the TTCA to control the engine for a set of CDR using the manual throttle switch. Now where the hell is that? So it says it's on panel 1. It's not illuminated. As I can see. Right. Command throt. So it's on the commander side, so we need to set the TTC set the to commander. That's already on commander. So if I did it, there we are. Right, so that's already on commander, okay. So with this setting, the translational axis used to move up and down no longer controls the RCS jets, but rather the manual engine thrust setting. This setting is added to the command thrust using the settings of the LGC. Start the engine again and use the manual thrust setting to control the engine thrust as monitored on the thrust gauge. Okay, let's start that. Boom. And that's what you do there. And then you control it using the manual thrust gauge. But I don't actually have any of that at the moment. But that is the very last lesson for this so far. So obviously it concludes the DPS tutorial. The lunar descent lesson will cover its usage in more detail. Have a good day, and we'll catch you in the next video.